good. Uh, so let's talk about the last part of this, uh, the thing, the math I want, I want to talk about. So we were talking about uh, algebra, which is what we learned in, uh, in, in, in middle school and high school. And then what else did you, you guys learn in middle school, high school, in math? Not much, I guess. <laughs> oh, I guess you, you guys learn a little bit of geometry, right? Yes. Yeah, but uh, like Euclidean geometry, like a uh, plane geometry with like triangles, square stuff. We don't need a whole lot of geometry here. Sometimes we would, when you use like a, you know, calculate the circumference of something, given the radius or something. But that's all pretty, I think pretty straightforward. So we're not gonna talk a whole lot of that, okay? Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, trigonometry, okay? Sometimes we just call it trick, okay? Well, this is a, some of you probably learned it from high school. If you learn it from your high school, give me a thumb up. I know some, some high school, they, they do that, okay? Okay, good, uh, like one person or something. Okay, two, okay. Now you, you learn in high school, you're good. I mean, uh, you're lucky, you know, not you're good, you're lucky. Now I learned this stuff in my high, when I was in high school. I, I think in China, they kind of uh, teach this uh, trigonometry to everybody in high school. And I know in America it's different. Some people get a little advanced in math or they got a, a good math teacher, they will learn it. Otherwise they, they won't. So, so as I said, we do need trigonometry here in this class. So we need, let me kind of talk about that, okay? So what is trigonometry, okay? Uh, what, well, as the name suggests, right? You have a trig here. So you have, you have a triangle. You start for everything from a triangle here, okay? And then you, you have a, in this triangle, you normally interested in one angle here, that's called theta, angle theta, okay? Now, this is, this is not, not a every triangle, it's a uh, right triangle. There's this angle here is 90 degree. And uh, you guys know the, the, the sum of the three triangle, uh, three angles in the triangle. What is the total degree of the three angles in a triangle? You guys know it? 180. 180, right? Do you guys know it? Do, do the rest of you guys know it? Yes, 180, okay, good. Yeah, so anyway, so what do we do? Now there's three sides. Normally, based on this angle, we can define, we can give a different name for each side of it, okay? So for this side, we call it offset. For this side, we call it adjacent. And for this side, we call it hypotenuse. There might be something wrong in my spelling. Uh, don't trust my spelling that much, okay? For especially for hypotenuse. If, if you feel like you know what is the right spelling, let me know. Uh, I may miss the letters here or something. But anyway, so this is adjacent because it's next to the angle. This is opposite because it's opposite to the angle. This is called hypotenuse because this is the longest side of this uh, right triangle. So you you define these three triangles. So when we talk about tri trigonometry, we talk about uh, functions, okay? Uh, we, we write this, well, we write them like this, okay? Uh, the first function we have is called sine of theta. And that's defined as offset divided by hypotenuse. And then we have something called cosine theta, which is defined as adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And then finally, we have something called tangent theta which is defined as offset divided by adjacent. Okay, so these are the three so-called trig, trig functions, okay? And these are how they are defined using a right triangle, okay? Now, this come to the next question, what is a, tr a function? How many of you have learned about this? How many of you have uh, learned about functions? Know what is a function? I mean, again, if you if you have it, click on. I mean, give a give a thumb up to me. Okay, I got two thumb up. Okay, now for the rest of you guys. Okay, let me explain what is a function. Okay, function is something really simple. Okay, so what is a function? Okay, and actually, this is a a pretty. Uh, 
in some sense, you kind of like a, a college uh, mass because uh, what really studies function well is uh, something called calculus. Okay, in calculus, our main subject is functions, and we want to study the properties of function and everything. But for this class, we don't need to worry about too much. So, what is a function? Very simple. Uh, a function. Think about function like as a machine. Okay, like a black box or a machine. Okay. The, what this machine does is you have an input. Okay, you have input uh, throw in the number in there. Okay, then if you give you a number out, okay. For example, uh, x squared may be a function. Okay, now if, for this function, if you threw in a number, let's say if you threw in one, you got uh, you take one square that give you one. Okay, now th you you threw in two in there, take two square it give you four. Okay, if you threw in three in there, it give you uh, nine. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That makes sense, you guys. So, function is like you throw something in, it gives you something out. Okay, it, it, it's called mathematically it's called mapping, mathematical mapping, mapping one uh, some number to some other numbers. But roughly, that's uh, how what function does. Okay. Now, take a simple example, right? Think about this example, right? Uh, uh, like you threw in pork, okay, and then you get a sausage. And you can call this machine a function. You know, th what this function does is uh, uh, it, it convert pork to a sausage. You know? Well, this may not be a mathematical function because it does not work with numbers, but it's still, a f you can think about this as function. Especially if you do like a computer uh, programming, we have a lot of functions work like that. You know? uh, do something, not only with numbers, but something else. Anyway, so this is what a function is. So same thing here, if we go back to this, right? See. In this case, for the trig functions we have, what we threw in here is a angle, okay? Whatever angle this is, maybe like 60 degree, 30 degree, whatever, okay? You threw in there, you take sine of this angle, you get a number. And that number for sine is happen to be the ratio between opposite and hypotenuse. For cosine, it happened to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And for tangent, it happened to be opposite divided by adjacent, okay? So these is the theta angle, the angle theta here is your input. And then, uh, okay, let me, let me put it here again, okay? So if this function is sine here, then you throw this angle in there, it's gonna give you opposite divided by hypotenuse. Now for cosine, you throw the angle in, it's gonna give you adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And for tangent, angle in, and then you have a, a opposite divided by adjacent, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Again, if you, if you like don't understand something, let me know. Oh, I got a message, great, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, there's, there's, okay. Some, a way to remember that is the trig functions is some old hippie called another hippie tripping on acid. Uh, I don't, uh, I've never heard about this, yeah. So it's like sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's like the first letter of that. Oh. So it's like S O H, some old oh. hippie caught, and it's just a saying that I learned. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Good, good, good suggestion. I've I've heard about something else, but uh, anyway. So let me. Okay, so anyway, this these are basically how this works. Now to so for us mostly we need to remember what we really remember is the definition of these, uh, of this uh, of of these functions, and uh, as uh, Blake said. Uh, a way to remember, okay, so what do we need to remember is if you go back to this, right? We remember whenever we see sine, it is opposite divided by hypotenuse. We, we, whenever we see o, cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So what Blake said was, uh, uh, so this is like a sum, some old, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, somebody else mentioned another thing. Yeah, good, yeah, KP. Uh, caught another 
EP tripping tripping on acid. So this is a sine is a O opposite divided by hypotenuse, cosine adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite divided by uh, adjacent. Now there's another another uh, way to remember this, and and another student just mentioned to me, uh, yeah, to everyone, yeah. Uh, so it's you can use Sokotoa, okay? Sokotoa. Well, that that's also pretty cool because this sounds like Cherokee for me. I don't know. Sokotoa, you know, <laughs> Cherokee Nation, Cherokee language, you know. I don't know anything about Cherokee language, but this sounds really like it, you know, or a Indian language or something. Sokotoa. So this is again sine sine equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse, cosine adjacent divided by hypotenuse, tangent opposite divided by adjacent. So yeah, I, e either way, you know, uh, I think, yeah. So again, it's important for you to remember this definition of these three uh, uh, trig functions so that we can use them properly. I'll give you some examples later on of how to, on how to use them, okay. <coughs> uh, well, for those of you who uh, uh, learned this first time, what I suggest you guys do is write these three uh, formulas on a piece of paper, may maybe together with this uh, diagram, you know, because the diagram is kind of useful as well. Okay, on a piece of paper, and put them on the wall uh, next to your bed, okay? This way, each time in the morning when you wake up, you should see this, uh, the, first, the first thing you, you do in the morning is look at these uh, functions, okay? And then the last thing you do in the morning, I mean, in the evening, right before you go to bed, see those functions, okay? You don't have to spend a whole lot of time. Just look at, it, just stare at it for like uh, uh, 10 seconds or something, you know? I mean, if you do that, I mean, Trust me, I mean, it, it works, you know, just do that. I mean, after a couple of weeks, they'll be your friends. They'll be your best friends, you know. You'll know them like, a, they'll be your reflex, you know. Anyway, and also, if you want, you can write this, uh, this, this sentence here, some old hippie called another hippie tripping on acid or Sokotoa, you know. Yeah, uh, just because it's important to remember them, okay. So, so, uh, Okay, so this is about that, okay. Before I give you examples, we also need to know some other functions, okay. Uh, intrig function, uh, intrig, which, which are simply the inverse functions, okay. <clears throat> inverse function. <clears throat> so what are inverse functions, okay? Very simple, okay. If you have a function that you give you input, uh, give you the output, the inverse function does exactly the opposite. So uh, for example, in this case, right, if you throw a two here, x squared give you four, right? A inverse function would, would do is, if you throw a four in there, it give you back the two, okay? So normally we use f minus one for inverse, just like for a number, you know, f minus one is like the inverse of f. So, so the idea is if you put these two functions next to each other, Okay, let's say you have something going in and then going through all of these. Uh, what, what do you get? Let's say, suppose I have a number two here uh, going into the, both of the two machines. What would be the outcome? Without knowing whatever function it is, what would be the outcome here? it's going to be still two, right? Because whatever it, give, it does here, it's going to be inversed here. So it's going to be going back to the same number. So whatever you threw in there, with those function and inverse function is like nothing happened because it's going to re recover it, okay? So using this uh, idea, I mean, that this uh, pork and sausage analogy, the inverse function of this function would be, uh, if you threw in a, uh, okay, maybe let me, let me do it first for, for the, for the x squared, for this case, okay? So if this function is x, right? I mean, x squared, right? Let's say f is a uh, x squared. And then what is the inverse of that, okay? So we're taking exactly, we're taking square root of this, you know? Square root of, of, the, of the symbol. Let, let's call this y, okay? Square root y. So 
basically, uh, if you have okay, uh, square root here as your function, right? You threw in number four, you get two, okay? You threw in number nine, you get three, okay? Threw in number one, you get one, because this does exactly the opposite, okay? Now, using the analogy of a uh, pork and sausage, uh, the inverse function of that would be, uh, if you threw the sausage in there, it's gonna give you pork, okay? Well, we've never seen that kind of machine, right? Kind of hard to do that, you know? Uh, but that's exactly what it means uh, in terms of inverse function, okay? Now, in, in, term, in the uh, context of trig functions, we, ha we define those three functions here, uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. So the inverse function, it, it does exactly that. So uh, that means if we take a, like sine of minus one, okay, this is how we write inverse. Uh, we, we, we have that opposite divided by a J, uh, of, of the hypotenuse. It's gonna give us back the angle theta, okay? Same thing, cosine minus one, if we had adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Uh, this ratio is a number, right? You can get a number here, take the inverse of that number, you get theta back, okay? And then for tangent, same thing. Opposite divided by adjacent, okay? We get back angle theta. Okay, so so see it does the exactly opposite as the uh, okay maybe maybe let me draw them here okay so a a function like sine sine negative negative one is like you threw in uh, the this ratio it gives you back the angle theta same thing for cosine minus one threw in the other ratio. Finally, for tangent minus one, through in the ratio opposite divided by adjacent. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? It's just exactly inverse, okay? Now, okay, these are the concepts, okay? And as I said, we don't need a whole lot of trigonometry. That's all trigonometry we need. So the most important thing is, uh, uh, okay, maybe, maybe you can put this in there with your another part of the uh, uh, paper, put them together on the, but I mean, this is not uh, separate, right? Just like the definition of inverse. Uh, if you know these already, like here, the inverse is kind of uh, exact, I mean, pretty obvious. Anyway, you can put these on your, on the piece of paper and put on uh, the, a wall as well. But, uh, so that's all we need for trigonometry, okay? We all we need is this uh, definition of the three trig functions and their inverse functions, okay? And then we need to know how to use them, okay? In, uh, in uh, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, okay? So we have uh, 20 minutes, that's good. Okay, so let's talk about how to use them. Uh, first of all, how do we really uh, get a number out of it, right? Uh, well, it's that simple. You don't have to do any calculations. I mean, any, anything yourself. You don't really know how to do it. Like, say, for example, uh, let's say if I write sine 45, right? How do you calculate? We don't really know. We cannot do it by hand, okay? Uh, well, what you can do, a uh, long time ago, people use like tables. You have to look it up in the table, but now we have calculators. So just take your calculator and then calculate it uh, with your calculator. Now, all these uh, scientific calculators, they should have trig functions on, uh, as one of the buttons here and then inverse functions as well. Even your cell phone has those functions in there. So, uh, but one thing you do want to make sure is your calculator is in a, in a correct mode because it can, you can measure uh, angle in different uh, units, okay? They, you have degree, you can measure in degree or radian or, or something else. Uh, I make sure your calculator, calculator is in the degree mode, okay? If you have a manual of your calculator, uh, take it out, uh, make sure, uh, check where you can change the mode. But a quick uh, check is this, okay? Open, turn on your calculator, try to calculate sine 90, okay? Sine 90, okay? If you get one, that probably means, uh, you're in the correct mode, okay? And try sine uh, 180, okay? 
and you should get zero. Okay? Sine 90 should give you one, sine 180 should be zero. Okay, if, you, if these are uh, correct, like this, okay, go to one, sine 180 equals to zero, okay? That means you're in the correct mode, okay? Now, the degrees here, uh, there's nowhere you can enter this small circle. Just enter the number in your calculator, just enter sine 90, and then see whether it's one, okay? Sine 180, see whether it's zero, okay? Uh, make sure it's in the right mode because we're using degree mode until a re, uh, we might, we, we do a little bit of reading uh, when we talk about rotations, but most of the semester will stay with degree mode. So make sure your uh, calculator is in the right mode, okay? Now, uh, how do we, uh, what do we do with those uh, uh, trig functions, okay? Let's start from the function themselves and then we'll go to the, uh, their inverse functions, okay? Oh, by, by the way, I forgot to mention, sometimes you see this kind of notation, arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent, okay? Uh, these are just a different names for the same thing, okay? Instead of calling them sine minus one, you call it arc sine. But the, these, these also mean they're, is they're inverse functions, okay? So let's, let's talk about uh, the applications or the examples uh, of how to use them, okay? So let's go back to sine, cosine, and tangent. So uh, what, do we, what, do we, uh, what can we do with that, okay? So again, let me start from drawing this uh, right triangle, okay? And I'll put the angle of theta here, okay? Now we have these three uh, lengths here, right? So uh, let's say, uh, I'm, suppose you have this triangle here and you know the angle of theta, okay? Let's say in this case, let me just make up some number. Say it equals 30 degree, okay? Now, let's say you also know something about this, uh, the, the side of it, but you don't know all of it. You know uh, one side, okay? For example, let's say, you know this, uh, I'll, I'll call this uh, A and this B and this C, okay? So suppose in this case, you know C equals to two, okay? Now the question is what is A and what is B, okay? Okay, uh, so this in this problem, we're given two kind of pieces of information. We're given, I don't know what this thing, why it's going on. Okay. We're given the uh, angle and we're also given one side of it. We're looking for the other two side, okay? Now, you guys probably know how to do this. Uh, say, for, for example, suppose we do not know uh, the angle. We only know, uh, let's say, suppose we know A equals to uh, four, B equals to three. How do we get C? You guys know how to solve this problem? If you know A and B, how do we get C? If this is a right triangle, how do we get C? Send me a message, okay. Oh, somebody did, let me see. What, uh, C doesn't know, uh, what do you mean? Uh, what is two? What does two mean? Okay. Or sorry, this is a long time ago. You guys probably answered the question uh, previously. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, square, so sorry. Let, 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 let me focus on, let's focus on this one. So if we know the two sides, how do we figure out the third side for a right triangle? What, what, what can, can, can you do to get the third side? You guys remember that? Okay, okay, yeah, great. Yeah, we have something called uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? We, which is basically, uh, I, I don't think I can spell Pythagorean correct. Pythagorean. Theorem. Basically saying for a right triangle, you have a, a square plus B square equal to C square, okay? So C equals to square root of A plus, A square plus B square, okay? So from there, you can figure out C. C in this case be like a four square plus three square, and this square root, that's five actually, okay? Okay, uh, so we know how to do this, but this is a kind of new. In this case, we only know one side, we only know one angle. How do we figure out the other two sides, okay? Uh, this is where uh, the trig function come in handy. So uh, <clears throat> let's start from A, okay? Now, given this angle and this, this side here, right? We, we wanna figure out this side, okay? <clears throat> Remember a trig function here, uh, look at these trig function we define here. So see, what it does here is, see, with the angle we know, we can, we can figure out the ratio of these two sides, okay? So it's like if you know the angle and if you also know one of the two sides, you can figure out the other one, okay? In this case, 
we know the hypotenuse and we want to figure out the opposite and adjacent. So that means we need one of these three functions. So uh, let's start from this, right? Uh, the opposite, right? If you want to get the opposite, so we know given the hypotenuse and the angle, the function we should use is sine, okay? Now you may not realize, realize this uh, immediately because you're not familiar with this uh, definitions, but you were, so that's why I wanted you to put, you put this piece of paper on the wall next to your bed. But if you know this, uh, you're familiar with this, you, you, you write this like, uh, in this uh, uh, context, you write, you can write like this, okay? You can write sine theta equals to A over C, okay? Again, A here is opposite, C is the uh, hypotenuse, okay? Sine theta equals A over C, okay? That's definition of the function, okay? That gives you A equals to C times sine theta, right? Again, in this, you can build this as an equation and A is the only unknown of the equation because we're given theta and C. So you multiply C on both sides, you have A equals C, C times sine theta. Now you plug in numbers, you have two sine 30, okay? Okay, now then you can pull out your calculator and then enter sine 30 and multiply by two. Sine 30 happened to be one half. So two times one half is one. So A is just one here in this case. Okay. Now another thing you can do, I mean, same, similar you can get B, okay? Uh, B is the adjacent, okay? Given the hypotenuse and angle theta, you can figure out the adjacent, right? Uh, that's our cosine. So cosine theta equals to B over C. So that means B equals to C times cosine theta, okay? So which is two times cosine 30, okay? Now cosine 30 is actually square root of three divided by two. So times two, that give us square root of three, okay? Square root of three. That's basically 1.732, okay? So that's B, okay? And uh, well, actually given if you already know uh, sine, you can also use another function to figure out B, because if you can you can use uh, a, adjacent, uh, opposite divided by adjacent, right? So remember you have a, or for the second part, okay? Or you can use tangent theta equals to B over, uh, A over B, okay? So B equals to A over tangent theta, which is a, uh, A is one, one over tangent theta, tangent 30 degree, okay? And that's actually uh, square, uh, uh, square root of three over three. So that gives you three over square root of three. That's nothing but square root of three. So that's same as this one, okay? So what I want to say here is we need those uh, trig functions mostly for these kind of jobs, okay? It's like you, if you have a right triangle and you know the angle, you know one of the side, the length of the side, you can figure out the other two by using proper trig functions, either sine or cosine or tangent. Okay. Any questions? Okay, good. Uh, so that's mostly how we use these uh, trig functions. Now, what about the inverse functions? Okay. So this is, let's say this is the example one. Okay. Uh, the inverse functions are very useful as well, uh, but for a different reason. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, let, let me put it here, okay? Example two. So in, in the case of inverse function, okay, uh, like a, what we were interested is in, uh, we were, what we're given are, okay, let's say C, A, B, and theta, okay? Now, to use the inverse function, we don't, I mean, for the problem we, we, we do, we do not know theta. What we know is normally two, uh, two sides of, uh, uh, of this triangle. Let's say I put some arbitrary number here. Let, let me put A equal to four and B equal to five, you know. Let's say, suppose we have these two uh, values here, okay, A and B, okay. Now we want to find out what is angle theta, okay. This is where we need inverse functions, okay. Why, because see, uh, Okay, A is, okay, for the angle theta here, right? A here is your opposite and B here is your adjacent, right? So the, the, one, the one function that connect these two 
together is our tangent. So we have tangent theta equals to A over B. By definition, adjacent divided by, uh, uh, sorry, opposite divided by adjacent. But we want to get theta, right? So that means we need, uh, we need to take the uh, inverse of this whole thing. So we have theta equals to tangent inverse A over B, okay? See, see this is, okay, see, you don't have to remember this to, uh, I mean, if you know this, okay, take tangent inverse on both sides, take same operation on both sides, okay, you give you theta equal tangent inverse A over B, okay? Well, on this side, tangent inverse on tangent is just recovered angle theta, right? Remember, uh, from pork to sausage and then sausage back to pork, okay? So, so this is the inverse function, okay? So we then need to enter, put the numbers in, you have A, which is four, B equal to five, okay? Take this ratio and then, so the next step here is use your calculator. Again, mostly we don't know, for most the angles or combinations, we don't really know what tangent inverse is. So just enter four divided by five first, and then take tangent inverse of that, okay? Uh, or it is, it may be labeled as arc tangent, okay? Okay. Uh, let me, I put a number eight point eight here. Okay. So what I got here is my calculator. I got uh, thirty eight point seven degree. Okay. So see, I kept three uh, six figures here, although I don't I don't really know. Like I could kept kept four or five, but uh, three I think is good. So. Uh, anyway, so that's that's how we use the inverse functions. Okay, so to summarize, mostly uh, you if you're given the angle, uh, so given angle and uh, and uh, a length, you can figure out the other length. Uh, find the other the other length. And you were given the uh, uh, two lengths, uh, you can find the angle. So this is the first case we you we need uh, those trig functions. Or the second case, we, so we, we let me write it, sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, in the second case, we need their inverse functions: sine minus one, cosine minus one and tangent minus one, okay? Does that make, make sense to you guys? And again, that's all we need for the trig functions. All we need are their definition and their definition, the definition of their inverse functions. And then we need to know how to use a calculator to calculate, uh, say if you give an angle, you can, you can calculate the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle, or given a ratio like this, you can use a, sine minus one, cosine minus one, and tangent minus one, figure out the angle themselves, okay? That's all we need to know, okay? Make sense? Okay, again, if you have questions, send me a message or just talk to me, okay? So in my calculator, is, is, this is called A10, okay? I guess it's short for arc tangent, okay? So they didn't write arc tangent, but they write A10, which is the same as tangent inverse. They're all the same thing, okay? Okay, so we have uh, nine minutes left, so let me, Maybe let's do an exercise together. Try to uh, use what we uh, learn from here, okay? So, okay, uh, the first case, I'm gonna give you the angle. Let's, let's put an angle here, like a 35 degree, okay? And then I'll, I'll give you a length here, uh, like a nine, okay? Try to figure out this length here. I'll call it A, and then I'll call this one B. Okay, try to figure this two out, okay, by using what we just learned, okay. Now, second example is gonna be, uh, sorry, exercise, okay. It's gonna be like, let's say you wanna figure out this angle theta, right? Let's call, let's say we know this this uh, side here <clears throat> as, uh, uh, I mean, again, put some arbitrary numbers, four, this one like uh, eight, Try to figure out the angle theta here, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Well, remember, you need your calculator, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be able to figure out, calculate the, the track function or their inverse. <clears throat> 
after you got the answer, your answer should be like a number, you know, uh, maybe with a decimal place and uh, uh, okay. I guess we're we're running out of time a little bit. So let me finish this uh, solution. Now we were done for today. Okay. So okay, the first one uh, we need we know the angle on one side one side one the one length. So we need to figure out the other length. So in that case, we use sine fun uh, trig functions. For a here, this is a, a, the opposite of the angle, and then we also know the hypotenuse. So the angle we need, uh, uh, the trig function we need is actually, uh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, don't have calculator, that's good, okay. Uh, that's okay. So uh, we need a sine, so we, let's do that, okay. Uh, so like a sine 35 equals to A divided by nine. So A equals to nine times sine 35, okay. You got uh, 5.16. Well, this thing here is adjacent, so we can use cosine 35 equals to b divided by nine. So b equals nine cosine 35, and you got 7.37, okay? Now, second one here, we're looking for the angle, so we need the uh, inverse function. We have the opposite and the hypotenuse, so that's like our sine. So sine theta equals to four over eight or one half. So theta equals to sine inverse uh, one half, okay? Now, sine inverse one half is like happened to be just uh, 30, right? Remember sine 30 is one half, so uh, sine inverse one half is 30. So, or you have a calculator, you got 30 as well, okay? Great, so uh, I guess that's all we want to talk about today. And we're happy that, uh, I've, I'm happy that we finished chapter one.